The United States, as the world knows, will never start a war. We do not want a war. We do not now expect a war. This generation of Americans has already had enough, more than enough, of war and hate and oppression. Agent Orange is the most toxic dioxin known to man. Agent Orange was just one of a series of heavy-duty chemicals the U.S. military used in Southeast Asia, called rainbow herbicides. There were also agents blue, pink, green, purple, and white. But orange was the big one. Some 20 million gallons were sprayed on Southeast Asian jungles, fields, and other targets over a nine-year period from 1962 to 1971. The goal was to rob the Viet Cong of food sources and places to hide. This kind of scorched earth fighting, clearing the land of anything the enemy could use, is an ancient military tactic. But using chemicals to do that was a pretty recent invention. England and the US developed tactical herbicides during World War II, but didn't really use them. Herbicidal warfare was first used by the British in the 1950s in what's now Malaysia. The US saw that and said, that could work for us in Vietnam. One of the most controversial American operations in Vietnam. Just the name of it evokes all sorts of horrible images. Agent Orange. What they're doing amounts to a pretty important form of conservation in itself, the saving of American lives. The tactical herbicide Agent Orange, which was used in Southeast Asia by the United States Department of Defense during the Vietnam War, was made from equal parts of the N-butyl esters of 2,4,5-T and 2,4-D. For almost half a century, controversy has surrounded its use, mainly because it contained a highly toxic dioxin impurity, TCDD. Despite this impurity being thoroughly investigated, there is still a lot of confusion by the general public regarding how it was formed and why it took so long to detect. We don't mean to say that there isn't an Agent Orange effect, but at this point in time, we don't seem to see anything that confirms that there's something there specifically. As public pressure grew, Congress began to investigate the claims and veterans groups took legal action. Over decades, the debate continued. In 1990, victims of exposure alleged that the Reagan administration pressured the CDC to drop a study on Agent Orange. The CDC argued that it could not determine which veterans had actually been exposed. Over time, both the chemical companies that supplied Agent Orange and the government began taking steps to address these claims. However, this chapter of history is hardly over. In 2011, the U.S. agreed to fund the decontamination of dioxin spots across Vietnam after years of arguing. At this point, estimates of the damage, from the number of people affected to the ecological effects, vary widely and remain a subject of intense debate. To some, this is only because it's difficult to track the levels of exposure, the causes of that exposure, and so on. To others, however, it's evidence that there's still something the United States doesn't want you to know about Agent Orange. The term Operation Ranch Hand was a military code name for spraying herbicides from U.S. Air Force aircraft in Southeast Asia from 1963 through 1971. Over the nine years of this operation, they extensively sprayed the rainforests with defoliants to expose the frequently changing routes and positions of the Viet Cong's supplies and soldiers, which crossed national borders. The defoliants were sprayed mainly from the air, but ground troops were also spraying from military vehicles. During the war, the U.S. Americans used different types of defoliants, called agents, which achieved various results. About 4.7 million liters of Agent Blue was used specifically to destroy the harvest and rice plantations. Approximately 1.8 million liters of Agent Purple was sprayed to test concentrations and effect. Agent Green and Agent Pink were then combined, and approximately 30,000 to 50,000 liters of this combination were sprayed over everything. At about 20 million liters, Agent White was the third largest agent and wasn't contaminated with dioxin. The only problem was, unlike the other agents, 
it took much longer to achieve its effects. So they decided it wouldn't work to win the war. The most effective and thus widely used of them all was Agent Orange, a mixture of purple, pink, and green. Approximately 45 million liters of Agent Orange were sprayed over Vietnam. Overall, more than 75 million liters of dioxin-containing defoliants were sprayed during the Vietnam War. We were constantly reassured that this was harmless stuff. That was the propaganda that was given to us throughout all levels of the military. Dioxins are a family of chemicals that have similar structures and similar mechanism of action and similar effects. Dioxins are extremely persistent chemicals. Because of their structure, they're resistant to both physical and biological degradation. Dioxins get introduced into the environment by a variety of ways. Either they're directly discharged into the into water, and then what happens when it gets into water is dioxins are sticky molecules. They don't like water very well. They'd rather be in fatty tissues or fatty material, and they'll bind to particles, settle out into the sediment. The sediment actually gets eaten by small critters, and they begin to bioaccumulate up the aquatic food chain. So that, in fact, dioxin has been shown in our experimental animal studies, and now we're seeing more of this in our human studies, dioxin has been shown not only to cause cancer, but to cause effects on the skin, to cause effects on the gastrointestinal system, to cause effects on the reproductive system, on the immune system, on the cardiovascular system, on the endocrine system, um, and on the nervous system as well. We know the effects of Agent Orange are turning up in the children of contaminated veterans, but now there's evidence the effect of this toxic substance is showing up in the next generation. Agent Orange was a safe product when it was used in the Vietnam War, and it's a safe product today. Can you describe the stench or the stink of the plane? It's like sticking your head into a bottle of Roundup and gargling, and then drenching your clothing in it and wrapping a towel around your face. People would literally throw up. This video from the C-123 Veterans Association addresses that nearly secret destruction of an entire fleet of aircraft how it was done to prevent veterans' access to Agent Orange benefits. At least in the beginning, nobody knew that these airplanes were contaminated and had remained contaminated with deadly dioxin after Vietnam. Well, it seems nobody else knew much about the C-123 contamination, not even the air crews who had flown the airplanes between 1972 and 82, during which time they'd been exposed. This absence of knowledge is because the Air Force Office of Environmental Law directed all information be kept in official channels only, where it rested secretly, quietly, out of sight from 1996 until released by the Freedom of Information Act request made by veterans in 2011. And now enter DOD Agent Orange consultant Al Young. Officials, Young recommended destruction of all the C-123s Young then did something the veterans find completely reprehensible. Young reminded base officials that veterans might read articles and learning of the toxic airplanes and the fact that they'd already been exposed might apply to the VA for Agent Orange medical care. Now to summarize Young's recommendation, the toxic airplanes were to be destroyed because already exposed veterans might learn about their exposure and seek medical care due them for their decade of exposure. The Air Force then picked up on Young's recommendation, forwarding it up the chain of command and including in this piece of official Air Force correspondence, the need to destroy the airplanes because the already exposed veterans might claim Agent Orange medical care. And this was to be prevented. On Thursday, the Secretary of the VA said in a statement, opening up eligibility for this deserving group of Air Force veterans and reservists is the right thing to do. Many of those vets were exposed to Agent Orange, but only some of them qualify for disability coverage at VA clinics. 
Today, they launched a new battle to change that. Connecticut veterans like Jerry Wright had no idea their own government was poisoning them. This was carried down through the water, into the water that I picked up and took back to my unit and we drank and we showered in. Now these vets are fighting a new battle for more medical coverage. Right now, only ground troops qualify for Agent Orange benefits. But last month, a bipartisan plan to expand benefits sank in Congress. The VA secretary had concerns about cost. We have a question about the funding mechanism, the funding mechanism that puts a burden on uh, young active duty service members who are getting their first home and also puts a burden on disabled American veterans. This bill has wide support from both parties, but there are questions about whether the science really links these sailors illnesses to Agent Orange. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member Blumenthal. I'm grateful for this hearing and for the bill that you recently introduced in this push to give our Blue Water veterans the coverage that they've earned and deserve. The U.S. government has recognized the dangers of Agent Orange since 1960. Congress passed the Agent Orange Act in 1991, which allowed all Vietnam veterans to receive presumptive coverage if they had Vietnam service medals and could prove symptoms related to Agent Orange exposure. But in 2002, the, v the VA decided to change the intent of Congress and halted its coverage to an estimated 174,000 veterans, including those who had served in the blue water just off Vietnam's coast. Since then, instead of treating every Vietnam veteran who suffers from a disease caused by Agent Orange, the VA is only treating those veterans who stepped foot on Vietnamese soil or whose boats were patrolling Vietnamese rivers. This distinction, which excludes the veterans who served on boats in Vietnam's bays and harbors, was recently ruled by the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims as arbitrary and capricious. We're seeing veterans who did serve, who were exposed to Agent Orange, and are now sick, being denied coverage because of this arbitrary, bureaucratic decision by the VA. The science doesn't support the policy. The Australian Department of Veteran Affairs recently con commissioned a study specifically about the Navy's water distillation process. In the study, ships in nearshore marine waters collected water that was contaminated with the runoff from areas sprayed with Agent Orange. And they found that the distillation methods used on their ships, the same methods used on the American Navy ships, actually concentrated Agent Orange in the drinking water. For some vets, the first symptoms began with blurred vision, memory loss, and lack of concentration. From there, the symptoms can get a lot worse. Agent Orange has been linked to prostate cancer, lung cancers, Parkinson's disease, and birth defects, among other diseases. After coming back from the war, soldiers and their children born after the war began to show symptoms. We have an avalanche of children with the, the main thing are these neurodevelopmental problems. Dyslexia, attention deficit, depression, all much higher than in children of non-veterans. Is what you're seeing with the grandchildren concerning? It's very concerning. Now, if a veteran's exposure while in the service caused problems for his children, Betty McDesey feels the government has an obligation to provide at least health care for them, but she fears that dollar signs will get in the way. The herbicide's use in Vietnam has been blamed for creating a human catastrophe among veterans. I died in Vietnam and didn't even know it. And the Vietnamese. Vietnam is convinced that these children are just the latest victims of the deadly chemical dioxin in Agent Orange, an epidemic of birth defects, brain damage, and rare cancers still affecting hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese today. According to environmental studies, high levels of dioxin could still be found in the soil in certain areas and had seeped into nearby lakes. But many more contaminated sites remain in Vietnam. And back in the U.S., while most veterans are now covered for 14 illnesses presumed to be related to Agent Orange exposure, some veterans are still trying to get those benefits. These are veterans who say America discarded them. We're being discriminated against because Agent Orange does not discriminate. The government does, and it's that, it's that simple. It is one thing to ask Americans to go into battle and to risk life and limb. It's another thing to then, after they've done that and suffered 
either directly or indirectly from the military situation they found themselves in to deny them the compensation for injuries or illnesses they, which they contracted. And the Department of Veterans Affairs continues to deny the vast majority of more than 30,000 claims by veterans with diseases associated with dioxin, the chemical contaminant in Agent Orange. There has been a shocking determination to deny compensation and to deny scientific evidence, not because the evidence was not there, but because the White House was afraid of what it would cost to compensate veterans who risked their lives for this country. More than 1,300 Vietnam vets have filed claims for Agent Orange contamination. Not one has been honored. We want an investigation of the Veterans Administration. We want the American people to listen to us. Decades after their service, several local Vietnam veterans say they're dealing with the side effects from their contact with Agent Orange. Under current VA regulations, 14 presumptive conditions are related to its exposure. Of those 14, three of those conditions have end dates and must be at least 10% disabling within one year of contact with the herbicide. Those conditions are chloroacne, a skin condition, porphyria cutana tarda, which is liver dysfunction, and peripheral neuropathy, which causes a variety of things like tumors and cancers. But you've seen how it really was. Heroism, danger, fear, all rolled into one. Words don't describe it. No event in American history is more misunderstood than the Vietnam War. It was misreported then, and it is misremembered now. Richard Nixon, 1985. But I got the news this morning. Yeah, the doctors told me so. They killed me in Vietnam, and I didn't even know. I tried hard to forget the war, like everybody did. Settled down, got married, even had a couple of kids. Well, my children both have birth defects, and the doctors had their doubts. They never could understand it. But I think I figured it out Cause I got the news this morning Yeah, the doctors told me so They killed me in Vietnam And I didn't even know This stage in orange from Vietnam We carry it with us still it Stays inside for years and years Before it starts to kill you might get cancer of the liver, you might get cancer of the skin. You can file for disability, but you might not live to win. But I got the news this morning, yeah, the doctor told me so. They killed me in Vietnam, and I didn't even know. And I had some time trying to be kind. I've never been a radical, but this has changed my mind. Oh, I'd be so proud to hear my kids say, Hell no, I won't go. Cause you killed my dad in Vietnam, and he didn't even know. Yes, I'd be so proud to hear my kids say, Hell no, I won't go. Cause you killed my dad in Vietnam, and he didn't even.